Hey guys, how are we doing? This is the... I thought I'd do a video on the craft beer pie wiring because I've had a few questions now on how I did it. And the the the, the wiring that's on the craft beer pie website is kind of very gene generic and it shows also the, the craft beer pie wiring or the pie wiring directly into the solid state release, which I'd found I had issues with, if you watched my original video when I built it. So I thought I'd go through in detail now on how it was all wired up, now that I'm kind of a year or two now, or kind of a year later down the line, and what I've kind of changes I've made as well over the time, and just take you through the schematics so it's a lot easier for yourselves to do this. So if you've seen this, you'd be able to wire it up quite easy. So I'll probably start off on the LV side of things, so the 230 volts domestic that comes in from your house. Now you're going to need, probably you're going to need at least a 13 amp supply if you're going to do it like I have, and that's using uh, 2.4 kilowatt elements currently, which I've got. That's your kind of minimum. Now this is for the UK, shall I say, so that Anywhere else in the world, you guys will probably have slightly different. But if you've got a single phase 230 or 240 volt uh, electric supply, then this is how you would do it. Now, you've got your three cables coming in. Now, what I recommend is the, the fusing for this is all up to yourself. For me, I've got, it's on a plug at the moment, so I've got a 13 amp plug as such. And the, the fuse in that is just a small wee little cartridge fuse on the plug itself. If you get bigger setups, then you will probably want to take this directly off a distribution board. Now, depending how much power you need, you need to then size that up. So effectively, that's P equals IV. Power equals current times voltage. So if you have... I don't know, let's just say you've got a five kilowatt set up. That's, if you want the current for that, so it's basically P divided by V, which is 230, which is 21.7 amps. So you're probably gonna want a 32 amp breaker would be sufficient. So yeah, it's it depends on your MCB. But anyway, so you, you can put your protection in. Now on my system, I've also put an RCD in here. So I've got my plug and then I wanted to have a residual current device that if it detected a, a fault, any sort of 30 milliamp fault, it would trip the RCD. That was purely for my uh, peace of mind because we're working with water, etc. Now I think that's called a, is it a ground fault interrupter or ground fault device or something in the States. It's effectively the same thing. It measures the current that goes in and then measures the current coming back through the neutral. And if there's a difference of 30 milliamps, it will cut the supply within 30 milliseconds. That's all based around the electric shock. Now, okay, so then you base, what I've got is you've got all your kind of supplies out. Now, I don't have any fusing on these. I just rely on the main fuse because I don't have very much selectivity or discrimination I wouldn't have because I've only got 13 amps to play with so I've not bothered subfusing any of these but if you've got a much bigger system then you might have some selectivity so then you can choose a smaller fuse as such now what you'll need to do is all your cabling will need to be sized for the current carrying capacity of that cable so you'll need to look up in tables uh, BS7671 has got tables, and then also you'll have your cable size as well, or in cable type, if it's twin and earth, or if it's XLPE, uh, yeah, or you're running singles, PVC singles. And then your, however you set up your bus bar arrangement, or uh, connector blocks, or whatever, it needs to be rated for the maximum current of the system. 
So this mine should be rated for 13 amps max because that's what my fuse allows. So everything, for me, everything needs to be rated for 13 amps in this system for the cabling. Okay, so that's just a little bit about the LV electrical uh, wiring as such. You need to ensure that everything, your cables are wired for the current carrying capacity of the maximum current that will flow in it, which is your running current, and then it will need to be sized. Basically, if it's sized off the fuse, then you're golden uh, fuse size. Okay, so effectively what I've got, so I've got a 12 volt supply here that I've got power coming into, and then I've got power going to my pump. Yep, power from my pump. I've got power going into my kettle, and I've got power going into my HLT straight off the, the mains. And then effectively what you're doing here is you're installing switches to turn these on or off. Now we've got a relay here, which is a 12 volt pump. That's powered off the 12 volt supply because I've got one of the kind of little solar power, solar pumps. So that effectively is fed off the 12 volt. So if, to turn these on and off, you need a switch, a solid state relay, is a basic solid state is in the name is a electronic device that turns as a switch and it really is a mechanical so it actually physically moves in here a coil really moves it to open and close these okay and these are solid state so it's like a uh, silicon yeah within them to, to operate it. So these are very quick and they don't wear out because with a kettle and an HLT you are effectively switching these at a rapid rate and if you were to install a relay or contactor that's suitable for 230 volts it's going to wear out pretty quick. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's that. Now your, what I will say about your solid state relays is the ones I bought, the Fotec ones, uh, they turned out to be Chinese copies, I believe. So what I would recommend is if you go to RS as such, one of our reputable electronics firms to get your solid state relays and don't get them off eBay or Amazon as such, because yeah, you'll just end up with crap like I did from Amazon. But there is a way to get around it, which uh, is this unit here. Now, it's, I've not seen, I've not heard if people buying from RS have proven for it to work for a direct. But the good thing with this Darlington transistor, before I go into all this, is it separates your pie from your relays and your pumps and all that. And if this blows, then this is cheaper to replace effectively than replacing a new Raspberry Pi unit. Okay. So anyway, we've got the switches here. And the other things we've got is, I've got a Darlington transistor I've shown here, uh, which is a, it's a ULN 2803A. Now, I've, I bought that off eBay, and it comes with uh, pins where you can just put your cables in, and it just connects straight into the pins. So you can find that on eBay. And then also you've got your Raspberry Pi unit here, which you'll find anywhere online, to be honest. They sell it all over. Okay, so this is all the, this should tie up, these pins should all tie up with the Craft Beer Pie website. And effectively, this is where it, the starting point for the schematic was taken from, was the Craft Beer Pie schematic. It had, it shows you all the sensors, the, the resistor, and then all the pins, and then these pins directly connect into, it shows you some SSRs. Now what I've got here as well is another bit is we've got a buzzer so that you can get alerts for when a step's completed, it will sound a buzzer. So that's on pin 22 and then 20 is used for the ground, okay? So what we'll do is we'll talk about the Darlington transistor. 
And so you've got your GPIO ports, which is 12, 16, 18, and 32 are the ones I've chosen. Now, pin 12 is GPIO 18. Pin 16 is GPIO 23. Pin 18 is GPI 24. And pin 22 is GPIO 25. And pin 32 is GPIO 12. Now these, I should have wrote these on the schematic, but I didn't. But if you're on the Craft Beer Pie website, you can see there's a breakdown on their schematic telling you the actual GPIO numbers. Now the reason you need that is because within the software, there is, when you select what output you want to put it onto, that, that's the actual call off. It's not the pin number as such. It's those GPIO numbers I told you. And again, you get that off the Craft Beer Pie website. That's probably an update I could do for this schematic, to be honest, to show those for you. And then I've wired it into my Darlington transistor onto pins 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B. Now you could space these out, which I have done, but for simplicity for the schematic I've just shown you, going into these four. And then off the other side, we've got the outputs coming off them. Now, I believe this is a three volt switching. Could, I'm possibly wrong, it could be connection to ground. But this is a kind of zero and three volts, which then the output effectively connects to earth. So if you put a three volt onto 1B or a signal onto 1B, what effectively does is it connects 1C to ground, right? And then if it's not powering, then this sits floating and it won't finish the SSR. It won't it won't connect the switch. So hence it's been connected onto the negative of the HLT SSR. And then what we have is we've got a 12 volt feed, right? That powers up everything. So it goes onto the common of your Darlington resistor and then effectively powers. Now you can do this any way you want. If you want to have it a common block or something like a bar, a bus bar for the 12 volt system. So you can connect all these in easier, but just for simplicity for the schematic, I've just shown them all hooking up. I've, uh, you can daisy them. Or, yeah, so you can do, da I've daisied mine and then effectively on one of them, I've then connected back to common and common back to the supply. But you can, you can change how you want to do this as long as it's got the same sort of 12 volt feed. And then effectively then you then use the other pin to make the connection. So you've got 12 volts through here and then back through. It, can, it completes the circuit which activates the relay and switches on the unit that you need. Okay, so that's how that works. And then what I will say is the sensors are now, now on the craft beer price schematic, they've got your HLT mash kettle. You can add more of these sensors in and then what you do is you just common them all. So pin nine goes, I think that's your ground. I'm not sure actually, and then you've got your green. So each three of these all connect onto each of these, and then you've got your 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. Now this connects to the three volt pin. Now that's the schematic. Now I'm sure I've seen actually that, I think it's a five volt pin. You can connect it to the five volt pin if you have issues. I'm just going to double check that as pin two is the five volt pin. Yes. So pin two, you can actually connect, instead of connecting it to pin one, you can connect it to pin two, which then allows it to, it gives it a better, you, you don't have as many issues, basically what I was told. So I believe mine is actually hooked to pin two, but if you're not having any issues, pin you can, Pin one's a standard, but you can boost it to five volts. And yeah, that is it, to be honest. If I see that, what I'll say is the elements. So this is just the 
you've got your live into this will all be one side so you'll have your live neutral earth into the element comes off it's just shown for simplicity you'll have connectors and all sorts however you decide to wire this up but ensure your cable is rated for the current that's going to flow in it so the maximum current that it will flow and you can get these off tables on the internet okay and that's about it the 12 volt supply will obviously power up the pump and then it also connects to the ground and also you want to common the 12 volt ground to ground on your raspberry pi because you need common these two otherwise the reference is lost so yeah and that is it i hope that was helpful and yeah if you have any questions then just pop them below on the youtube video and yeah thanks for watching guys and i hope you enjoyed that and if you check out some other stuff that i've been doing i do a lot of brew videos with using this system so check that out hit subscribe and yeah thanks for watching guys and i'll speak to you later bye i'll be back